Hey, what is going on YouTube? In today's video, we're going to briefly cover a few questions that were asked on my YouTube channel. The first question being, how do you reset the password for Greenbone or OpenVos, the vulnerability scanner? I had created two other videos if you are interested in this topic. Those two videos are taking off right now, and they are in regards to the installation and a vulnerability scan. Uh, so with that being said, we're going to start this video out with resetting your password. It's a pretty straightforward process. Uh, so if you were locked out, I'll teach you how to do that. And in the other part of this video, we're going to deeply go into how you could create a script to update the uh, status feeds, which is what your vulnerability data will be coming from. And we will all we will do that with the bash script, and then we will automate it with cron tab um, or cron jobs. Uh, so with that being said, let's get right into it. So many times, especially in the lab, you have many usernames and passwords for the many applications that you were running. Uh, and in this case, it happened to me several times and a few of our viewers here on CyberMe. Uh, they were not able to log into their account. By default, it is admin and admin. But if you were not able to log in, um, say you forgot it and you changed it for whatever reason, I do have a solution for you. All right, so first, you're, you are going to SSH into that server that is hosting OpenVos. And in this case, I'm already in the box. Uh, the next thing that you are going to want to do is you're going to want to get a list of the you are going to want to get a list of the running Docker containers. To do that, you're going to run sudo docker ps. Now to give you a list of all the Docker containers, in there you want to find the one for gvmd, and in that case, uh, you want to also find the container ID. This is the most important part of this process. Go ahead, copy that. And then you're going to go ahead and execute this command. So right now we're going to do a Docker exec uh, with the user gvmd. And then we're going to specify the Docker container. So we'll put the ID here. And then we're going to go ahead and then do um, the binary. So gvmd. And then we're going to specify the user, and then we're going to go ahead and specify that new password. Hopefully this time you don't forget it. Uh, so again, let me explain this. We're going to run sudo. Uh, depending on your environment, you might not need to use sudo if you have that user um, allowing to use Docker without it. Uh, so sudo docker exec. Uh, so execute user gvmd inside of this docker container that we found which was gvmd and then we're going to go ahead and specify the username that we want to reset and then the password so now if we go here and we go to admin admin it shouldn't work but now if we do one two three four we should get it no problem all right that's awesome we were able to reset the password for the admin user now the next thing that i want to bring up Again, is going to be the updating of the feeds, uh, which is what is going to be pulling in this vulnerability. You want updated feeds in order to perform a proper vulnerability scan. Otherwise, you might be scanning a machine and not getting the correct results or outdated results. Uh, so with that being said, if you go to the administration tab here along the top, go down to feed status. In my case, I put an example in here, which I'll show you exactly how I did that. So here is what we're going to update or at least prove it to you how we could update it. And I do want to mention this was a, I had a few questions on the channel. I'm going to pop up a picture here of one of the users that had reached out. I appreciate you reaching out. If you guys have any questions, concerns, comments, you know, drop it down. I always try to reply, whether it's in, a, in a, the, one of my commented uh, feeds or in, on any of my videos. I do try to respond. Uh, so feel free to reach out. Uh, so first, next thing that we're going to do is going to go ahead and we're going to highlight the Docker hub or the container on how I got this old image, just so you get an idea of how it's all going to work. All right, so if we head back over to, or if we go over to Docker hub, we pull up Greenbone and we look specifically at SCAP data, which is going to be one of the feeds. Now we have SCAP data, we have VT, um, MVT, SCAP, CERT, those are the feeds that we're going to want to pull in gvmd data um, so the one that i'm providing providing an example on is going to be scap data so if you go over to the docker hub and then you go in there and you click on tags this will be the various tags that are associated with this image um, so what i did is i went from 
to the oldest tag and just grabbed it. This way was a good example uh, showing how this will update it. But by default, if you go to newest, this is going to be by default in our uh, Docker Compose file, which I'll show you right now. So here's the Docker Compose file on the server. Um, another thing that I do suggest you doing is go ahead, if you're not uh, already doing so, is use Visual, Stu Visual Studio Code in order to SSH into these servers. It just makes it that much easier to go ahead and edit the configuration files instead of doing it through SSH. You can do that as well. Um, for instance, for example, if we were to just go here, go ahead and cat out Docker Compose file, and we can scroll up and down, uh, and then we could also go into Vim and edit it that way. I like to use Visual Studio Code. Uh, not only does it give us syntax highlighting, um, it's just perfect to easily navigate and stuff like that, and stuff like that. All right, so with that being said, inside of the Docker Compose file, for those that are familiar with it um, or not familiar with it, so in this case, when we go ahead and run Docker Compose up, when we bring up all of our containers, it's going to go ahead and go in through each of these services. And this is the one that we're concerned about today. Um, although it will work for all of them, I just grabbed one of them and put it out of date so you can show that it updates. So this is going to be the image that we're going to be grabbing, and this is going to be latest. Essentially, this is just like that. Uh, we're just going to leave it just like this as it will pull in the latest uh, stable image. And that will do it for all of these um, services. All right, so for the next part of this, we're going to go ahead and create a script. So like I said, this is going to pretty much pull down the Docker or turn off the Docker containers. And then it's going to go ahead and pull in the latest Docker image. And then we're going to go ahead and bring that back up. This is all going to be logged to a file, so you can go ahead and view it later for, for any errors or see what the status is and stuff like that. And we're going to put this all in a cron job so you could automate it on a schedule. Um, so with that being said, let's go ahead and go under Open VOS. Let's go ahead and create a new file. And let's name this updateopenVOS.sh. And this is going to give us the... Um, the file extension for a batch script. Let's go ahead and create a uh, declaration at the top or shebang uh, bin bash. So that's later on when we go to execute it, it's going to execute um, with bash and not like Python or anything like that. Uh, so the first thing that we're going to want to do is we are going to want to go into the directory where that Docker Compose file is going to be. So this one right here. So in my case, we could put comments in, but I'm just giving examples. Or we could do it change to home directory. And then we're just going to go ahead and specify that here. All right, so that's where the Docker Compose file is stored. So as you can see here, if we cd root and we do cd home cause open bus, list it out. We will have the Docker Compose file and the update open VOS script that we are creating that we are creating right now. So the next thing that we want to go ahead and do is we want to make sure that we go into this directory. So right now we just kind of specified it. Uh, now we want to go actually into this directory in order to perform the following um, steps. So let's say so I should so we'll just say declare and then move. It's not even home directory. I don't know what I'm saying. Just say declare a directory. You know, say move into home, not move into. Then all we're going to do is simply just, just as it, we would if we were in a terminal, go ahead and do change directory. And we're going to specify that variable. And then we're going to go ahead and if this. Um, Directory does not exist for whatever reason. This is not necessary. It's something I do for troubleshooting purposes usually. Directory does not exist. And then just go ahead. You could do it. Specify that there. So it'll print. All right. So now we can go ahead and change directory into the variable that we had just specified up here or that path. And then we're going to go ahead and echo it out uh, if it does not exist. Um, in this case, it will. The next step in the script is you're going to want to go ahead and stop any running containers, obviously, because we want to go ahead and pull it in and then restart those uh, containers with the latest images. So we'll just go ahead and say 
stop there's and then we're just going to do simply we could also use echo to kind of give comments um while it's like executing the script so powering down okay so now we echoed that to the terminal and then we're going to go ahead and hit docker compose down just like we would if we were in the actual session the terminal and then we want to go ahead and just simply just do uh, let's do uh well, we'll just say here we'll do comment download latest image and then we're just going to simply do another um you know right to the terminal And then we're, since we're in that directory and we're going to use docker compose all you gotta do is simply do docker compose pull and then it will pull in the latest images that specified within there and then last but not least all you got to do is docker compose up dash d to put it in detached and then we can just close this out simple simple script all right so from top down uh we're going to go ahead and specify a variable to the directory where the docker compose file is stored then we're going to go ahead and change directory into that directory. And then if it does not exist, we're going to let the user know. And then we're going to exit. Um, we're going to put a comment in the, in the terminal notifying the user that is powering down the containers. Uh, again, it's going to do Docker Compose down from the context of this directory here. That will power down our OpenVos containers. Once that is complete, it will say down, downloading latest images. Then it'll pull in that latest image. It'll bring them all up, the containers with those latest images, and the updates complete. Great. So now we have this script here. So if we just go on the term or on the uh, the box, go ahead and cat it out and read that file out. We can see that the contents of that file that we had just described is there. Next, we're gonna go ahead and want to go and do um, to make this script executable. So we'll just do chmod plus x to give it that executable flag, and then we'll specify the file which is going to be the update. And now if we do LS again, we should see it in green, or if we LS LA, we should see the um, execute for everybody. All right, so in order for this script to work, or in order to automate it, like I said, we're going to go ahead and use cronjob or crontab, um, cron. Uh, so do, to do so, you're going to need to do this in my case uh, i need sudo permissions so go ahead and open up sudo cron tab dash e so we could open up sudo in with or open cron tab with sudo with boot permissions so anything that's executed within this uh, file here will be with sudo permissions and then we're just going to go ahead and set up a cron job so for those that are not familiar i'm going to go ahead and just bring up a, a nice resource that i've used over the so years this is something that i've used back in the day and i still use it from time to time uh, so the cron tab.guru this will go ahead and give you the um i guess syntax or verbiage on how exactly what time you want so the kind of describes it all here so this could be minute hour day month day of week all of what you can see right here so just a, a cool tool you could use um so in my case since Since it is uh, on this box, at least on UTC time, it is 1256. Let's go ahead and create a script to run at 58. So every minute, we might change it to, depending on how we get there. But uh, so in this case, since we just want to test it out, we're going to go ahead and set it to 58. So this will execute on every hour of every day, on every month of every day of the week at minute 58. So 158, 258, 358, 458. It just gives us a quick way to go ahead and test out this script, this script and the cron job. So let's go ahead, go back into the cron tab. And then we're going to go down to the bottom and edit the file. And then let's go ahead, like I said, and do 58. And we're going to do star, 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 star. And then we want to specify that directory. And then we want to go ahead and write anything from that execution to a file. And then, depending on how you want to do it, this um, will pretty much write standard and errors to that log. 
but this will give us pretty much everything, uh, including errors to that log file. So let's go back in there, kind of talk about it one more time before it hits that minute. So again, minute 58 of every hour, of every day of the month, of every, or every day, every month, of every day of the week. It's going to go ahead and execute this script here, found in this directory here. And it's going to write whatever happens into this file here uh, with this output here. So that's just saying every, uh, pretty much everything, errors and, and input. Um, one thing that you want to do before that happens, so you're going to go ahead and want to create that file. So now we have that file. So now, once it hits, uh, it might have been too late. No, looks like I hit it just in time. Uh, I'm not sure if you saw what just happened there. Uh, so we put the cron job in time. It happened at 58 while I was already in there. We created that file, and then it was able to write to that file. So right now it's executing that file. Um, so it stopped. So right now it's executing that file. Uh, so as you can see, it's going ahead and it's pulling that data in, it's pulling the scap data in, it's downloading it, uh, and then it's done. So if we go ahead and run sudo docker ps, we could go ahead and we see that we have these up. They just up a minute ago. Another thing that we could do is to just to see the images. So if we go to sudo docker, so these are containers. And then we do sudo docker image or image ls. This will give us the images, and as you can see, this is the old image 14 months ago, and now we should be able to see SCAP data, uh, the other SCAP data, and this is three weeks ago. This is the latest from Docker Hub. So if we go, to, so if we go back to Docker Hub, you could see it was 22 days ago. Uh, so it's pretty much exactly three weeks ago. Um, so it's pretty much three weeks ago. So at this point, now all we got to do just to prove that it all worked, um, go into here. Oh, got to change my password. Uh, admin, and then the password one two three four. And then once I'm in, you can see now we have updated feed uh, for SCAP, and these are obviously all updated as well as nothing. None of those changes. And that's pretty much going to sum up today's video. I hope you you were able to take something away. Uh, in this video, we went ahead and answered a few questions that some of the viewers had on this channel. Again, if you did not watch any of the previous videos for OpenVos, just last month I went ahead and installed it. And then in another video, I went into detail on how to perform a vulnerability scan. And in this case, I answered two questions that some of the viewers had. One question being on how to change a password if you cannot get into the UI. Uh, and then the other question was how can we update the status feeds uh, in this case we went ahead and we created a script we made that script executable we added it to a cron job and then we uh, proved that that uh, latest image was pulled in and now we have the latest data feed for scap data uh, so like I said I hope you were able to take something away and um, as always never stop learning